Hey guys, this video is going to be dedicated to helping you solve a fairly challenging friction problem. So here's the particular problem. Let's say that we've got this 100 kilogram mass just here, and this mass is connected via a pulley to this other mass, M. And we're asked to find out what the ranges of the mass M must be such that this block doesn't slide down the slope or slide up the slope. Basically, so it stays still. Right? And the important thing to notice about this is that there is friction in this junction between this block and the surface just here. Okay, so have a shot at this yourself first, and then come back when you're done. Well, I'm going to start with a free body diagram of this 100 kilogram mass. And to do that, I'm going to make a cut right along here. So let's do that. This is what our free body diagram looks like. This will be our 100 kilogram mass. This will be its force due to gravity of 100 G. We'll have a normal force perpendicular to the slope. So this is gonna be N. And of course, if we were to draw our pulley, in minimum detail, it looks just like this. Where of course, these are our cut sections just here. And this right here, popping out, is our tension force in both cases, where the, the tension force is constant um, throughout this entire cable because we're making the standard assumptions that it's massless and the, and the pulley is, is frictionless. Okay, so now that we've got that sorted, how do we then figure out what the direction of the friction force is? It's, this is arguably the most important part of solving this problem, so it's worth pausing the video here and, and really giving this a think first. Basically, I want you to consider if the mass M is very light, and I know this is a relative term right here, but just bear with me. If the mass M is very light, that means that our friction force will be in what direction? Well, basically, if the mass M is very light, that means this 100 kilogram block is going to have a tendency to try and move downhill, right? Which means that the friction force must be, must be uphill, uphill, because it tries to like counteract the tendency to move. So if, the, if M is very light, the 100 kilogram mass will have a tendency to move downhill, which means the friction force must be uphill. Conversely, if our mass is very heavy, is very heavy, then our friction force, then our friction force is downhill for the exact opposite reasons. Okay? Or the exact same reasons, depending on how you look on it. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to evaluate just one case. I'm going to try and evaluate case one, basically for the very light mass. So I'm just going to draw the friction force uphill. Although we'll actually have to do this problem twice. We'll have to evaluate the friction force being uphill and then downhill to find the ranges of the values of our mass. Okay, so this is going to be our friction force just here. Now that we've got that sorted, let's draw an axis so we can quantify what we mean by positive and negative. This will be x, this will be y, right? And now let's draw our free body diagram of our second mass. An important thing to note is I'm making a cut right along here. Okay, so let's draw that. This will be our block on a slight slope, just like this. And this will be our force due to gravity downwards, going through the center of mass, mg. Our normal force will be perpendicular to slope n. Notice there's no friction because there are rollers just here. And we know we've got a rope just here. We've made a cut, which means there's a tension force poking out, which is of magnitude t. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And uh, to quantify what I mean by positive and negative, I'm going to use a different axis. I'm going to use this axis. I'm going to call this x bar, and I'm going to call this y bar, just there. Okay, well, we know there are we know, we know a few equations which can help us right now. We know there's one equation, which is the sum of forces in the x direction must be equal to zero. This is because we're solving for both these blocks not accelerating. Right? So the sum of forces in the x direction must be equal to zero. I'll call that equation one. The sum of forces in the y direction must be equal to zero. I'll call that equation two. And we also know the sum of forces of our second block in the x prime condition, in the, in the x prime direction, sorry, must be equal to zero. And the sum of forces in the y prime um, direction must also be equal to zero. This is because we're solving for these blocks not accelerating. Right? If, 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 we were, if these blocks were moving, this wouldn't be the case. But we're solving for the accelerations equal to zero. I hope that makes sense. And I'll call this equation three, and I'll call this equation four. OK, um, we're ready to start solving this a little bit analytically now. Let's start off with equation one. OK, what are the sum of forces in the x direction? Well, it's going to be 2t. That's going to be the tension forces taken care of. We're also going to have our friction force in the direction of the tangential direction x. But we've also got our component of gravity, which is in the negative tangential direction, like this. 
So basically we can prove using geometry that this is 20 degrees, meaning that we know that's going to be subtracted from 100 G times by sine 20. I hope that makes sense. And that's going to be equal to zero. That is equation one sorted, right? Let's sort out equation two now. Um, we know the normal force is purely in the y direction, but we've also got a component of gravity in the y direction too, minus 100 G cosine 20, and that's going to be equal to zero. All right, we're at crossroads now. We don't know what our friction force is, and um, this is a huge component of this problem, so I think it's worth really considering this. Um, so I'll just pause the video and have a think about this. Um, basically, um, the friction, we're, we're going to analyze, we are going to analyze the extreme values values of our mass m of m right and to do that oops misspell and how embarrassing and to do that we need to consider the extreme friction forces um, on our block so to do that we need we need to evaluate we need to solve so for our friction force, let me keep the colors consistent. We need to solve for the friction force must be equal to our maximum friction force, right? And of course we know our maximum static friction force is always going to be mu s n, right? I hope that makes sense. Basically, we're trying to solve for our extreme values of our mass, whether it's really light or really heavy. And that will occur when we're dealing with our maximum friction forces, mu s n. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute f f is equal to mu s n from here on in. I hope that makes sense. That's a really important step, um, which is I think commonly missed by students. Okay, so now that we can, now we've got this, we can plug one and two together. Um, so let's substitute equation two into equation one, and what do we get? We're left with two t. We're left with two t plus our friction force, which is mu s times by n, and n from equation two is just one hundred g cosine twenty. Right, and then we're left with on the right hand side once you bring this term over 100 g sine 20. I hope I'm not losing you with that um, algebra jump. Let's solve for t now, and we're left with t must be equal to 100 g sine 20 minus mu s times by 100 g cosine 20. And once you divide by two, you're left with that. Okay, so this is this is a this is a huge equation which will play a huge part soon. But in order to solve for m, we need to find an expression for t. So let's zoom up a little bit so we can see this. In fact, let me zoom out a bit so you can get all this all in one picture. There we go. Now let's analyze equation three. Let's analyze equation three. What's what's the um, sum of forces in the x prime um, uh, direction? Well, we know that our mass, our, our, our force due to our gravity is gonna look like this. Right? We know that this angle here is 10 degrees, so that means we can solve for this. We know that it's going to be mg cosine of 10, cosine of 10 minus our tension force must be equal to zero. In this particular case, there's no need to invoke the fourth equation, which means that we can solve for t. We know t is just going to be equal to mg cosine 10. Easy enough. Okay, We're, This is equation 3, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug equation 3 into this equation right here. So um, insert, insert equation three, and this is what we're left with. We're left with mg, mg cosine ten, cosine ten, must be equal to, must be equal to one hundred g sine twenty minus mu s times by one hundred g cosine of twenty, all divided by two. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm not losing you. At the moment, this is just pure algebra. Right? Um, we can solve for m because after all that's what we're trying to find and we're left with m is going to be equal to let me write this out one final time 100 g sine 20 minus mu s times 100 g cosine 20 all divided by 2 times by g cosine 10 cosine 10 and once the g's cancel off you're left with bam 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 and you're left with m must be equal to 100 sine 20 minus mu s times 100 cosine 20, cosine 20 all divided by 2 cosine 10. I hope that makes sense, right? <clears throat> now, 
when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to be left with M must be equal to 3.052 kilograms. Now, this is, a, this is an important point, so I, I really want you to think about this for a second. In, in our initial free body diagram, we chose to evaluate the friction force being uphill, which corresponded to, as I talked earlier, the minimum value of our mass. Right, so this right here denotes our minimum mass. This is our, this is our min mass just here. In order to find our maximum mass, we can do the exact same thing we've already done, but instead, but instead switch the direction of our friction force. So you can do everything we've just done and, and get a slightly different expression. In fact, the only difference in the expression will be that this term will be a plus sign just here. And once you evaluate that into your calculator, you'll be left with 31.68 kilograms. And this will be our maximum mass. And that means everything in between these values corresponds to no net movement or no net acceleration of either of the blocks. Meaning that our, our inequality is going to be 3.05 kilograms must be less than our mass, must be, must be less than 31.68 kilograms. This is the range of our values of our mass such that there's no movement of either block. I hope that makes sense.